I mean, what do you what do you take away from this game? They, Bryce was just saying yeah. that they feel like they should have won it. They also credited you guys for finding a way to win it. Uh, you obviously, you guys are going to grow the whole season. Grimes mm-hmm. is fantastic, but you were also heavily challenged on this court. Yeah, we weren't very good for a long time, Brian, and it's uh, full disclosure. And we've, uh, <clears throat> you know, and I was, uh, before the game, you know, two, two years ago, we had two great, great, and maybe unless you're a coach, you, you may not grasp the uh, magnitude of this statement, but we had two great senior leaders and captains. Um, yeah, Devin Davis and Rob Gray, they, they were good. They were good. Uh, coming up here, Quentin. They, they were good for the team. They, they had their back. Um, a lot of the stuff that went on on the court tonight, the first, would have never gone on the court last year with Galen and uh, Corey. You, know, you can see our inexperience. You know, um, you know, Quentin's coming from a challenging situation last year for even, you know, he's not to a leadership stage yet. He's He's still trying to figure out what color his jersey is. You know, how can he help somebody else? Uh, you know, Nate's a sophomore that's, you know, is one of our uh, tough role players. Uh, you know, Dejan's mercurial. Uh, sometimes you're not quite sure what you're going to get from him. Uh, but in his uh, defense, he broke his hand on October 8th. And he was out for uh, 37 consecutive days without touching the ball because he broke his right hand. He broke the bone right here. So he's out 37 consecutive days. And that messed with him. You can tell him. He said turnover he had the first night. He was all twisted. I couldn't get him out fast enough. You know, um, when I was an NAIA coach, uh, I remember <clears throat> that first year when we weren't very good, I used to call all of my timeouts sometime before the first 10 minutes. You know, <laughs> we were terrible. <laughs> I called those timeouts. I said, so, I said this. I told the referees. I said, now that guy down there is not calling any timeouts. So anyway, I can use his. Um, but I, but you know, I called four timeouts because we didn't have any leadership on the floor. You know, we're just we're just kind of out there right now. Um, but <clears throat> like BYU the other night, I, I don't know if we could. I, I never had a team make as many mistakes. We chart our mistakes in what categories they come from. I think we have. We gave up 19 points on pick and roll breakdowns. We actually wouldn't give up 19 points in, in a month on pick and roll breakdowns. But this team's not anywhere close to where they're going to be later. Yeah. You know, but I think one of the things that has to help you along the way, like it would have been great if that kid had not made a shot. You know, because you know, a team goes through three stages. You hope you can win, you think you can win, then you know you can win. But you but they all have to go through it. You know, last year's uh, two years ago, that team lost to Drexel. You know, then rest thing you know, they won 27 games and almost won the Sweet 16. But they didn't start the season off knowing they could win. They, they were hoping to. You know, and that's why to win tonight, uh, no matter how we won it, uh, was good for uh, our young guy's psyche. You know, this is the first time I've played two freshmen since I've been at Houston. And I've never played freshmen like this, you know. And, and technically, Marcus is in... Caleb's spot and Caleb tonight was in Corey's spot. Well, that's not a fair fight. But, um, you know, eventually those guys are going to be good players, but it's not going to be this month. That's why um, I, I have to be a little patient. I'm not good at that. You know, I'm, I know I'm not, but, I, but I've got to be. You know, um, I've been coaching Quentin Hart. I hold him accountable for just about everything. But I think because he's such a high character kid and he comes from such a great uh, family background, He's he's able to handle it, and um, um, and tonight, you know, it's a good payday for him because he's, he's put in a lot of work. This kid really, really works at it. He he deserved to have that game. That's why I was so proud of him and happy for it. How, how, what did you see from him being able to kind of guide you guys through this, especially in the second half? Just not afraid to not afraid of the moment. Um, I think the big three. Uh, uh, Mar- did Marcus hit the one to put us ahead? Uh, for the first time in yeah, the summer. Yeah, one first area. Yeah, and, and then um, uh, then the other thing, we, we switched our defense. We got out of the man-to-man. Um, I'm sure their second team guards them better than we did in practice every day. Um, what we were doing was just bad. I mean, that, that thing was getting ready to get ugly, the way we were guarding them. But, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> 
Kayla, Kayla's man was running to guard Marcus, and they, they know what to do, but they're not sure they know what they're doing. Next thing you know, boom, just a little, little hesitant, wide open three. So I told the staff, I said, look, fellas, unless we um, find a way to get them off their rhythm, this thing ain't going to end real good. So we jumped in at 3-2, and our kids were active in it. But what we did good in the 3-2 was rebound. Every time they shot and missed, we got the rebound, and then we got out in transition. And that's where Dejan and um, um, Quentin's, uh, both of them are elite passers. Uh, and they, they started working really well together. But um, um, we, Quentin needed this kind of game. Dejan did too, because we haven't had him. We haven't had him since September. You know, it's just, it's just been a disheveled, it's just been a very disheveled time for us. We just haven't been solid at anything in practice or preparation. You know, leadership is a uh, big void, uh, these freshmen. But, um, you know, we'll take some more hits. It's not, you know, last year we went 13-0, and 0, but we easily could have lost three games. Could have lost to St. Louis. We're down 15 to LSU. We're down 10 to St. Louis. We're down 10 to somebody. Oh, Utah State, we're down 10. Um, but, but like the BYU game the other night, we won that game last year. This year we, we didn't get the break at the end. Um, but coming back here tonight, I knew this was going to be a hard game because <clears throat> I know how good Santa Barbara is in their gym. Now, a lot of people, they don't, they assume you're no good if they haven't heard of you. Well, some people haven't heard of nothing. Um, but it's difficult to win at Santa Barbara. They were down 20 and came back and won. That's when I knew Rice was for real. They got a good team, and Scott's a good coach. They, they, run, they run stuff that's hard for us to guard with this team right now because they have it so spread out. Quentin, what was tonight like for you to be able to have 32? You guys find a way to win this game and to, to do it in on Rice's court considering everything you've been through. Yeah, definitely. Coach definitely stress how important the game would be. Just you knowing how good Rice was, you knowing how they came back from a, a 20 point deficit at UC uh, Santa Barbara. So just knowing that we got to come in with the right mindset, kind of have some mishap in the first half. But like Coach said, once in the second half, coming in kind of, we got toughened. We got toughness in us and we went to that 3 2. They kind of got right on there off and got a little bit snagged with the ball movement. They took some bad shots. We got the rebound and we just kind of went down and played Cougar basketball. Quinn, at what point was the second half when Coach made the change that you were able to get everybody to settle down mm -hmm. and just you all just just start you know being becoming patient with your offense and being more aggressive on the defensive end? Yeah, definitely. Right when we went to that three-two, they kind of just started just moving the ball. They weren't really looking to be aggressive. Uh, coming off them screens, we kind of did a good job. Marks in the middle and just stunning so I could get, do the second stunt coming up so they couldn't get an open three and we get the rebound. They went back in their little two, three or three, two action. We had Mark the shooter running baseline. They got to take him every time because he's just a knockdown shooter. And that just opens up the gap for me and Dejan to go in there and make plays. <coughs> what did you think of the, the atmosphere here tonight and this game being this tight in this, in this gym? Yeah, I, I, I think in some ways, Brian, uh, you can – Tell how far our programs come. Was, um, there was some, I, I'm being facetious when I say this, so yeah. don't take it uh, face value. But we we had games uh, that first year. Where, uh, I mean, look how many people traveled to see us now. You know, we had an unbelievable crowd Friday night. You know, um, and that's great. That's great for our university. Our athletic department needs that. We need a little shot. We need a little adrenaline going. Something, you know, fans just want something to to make them feel good and feel proud. You know, and if that's us, so be it. You know, uh, there's no doubt our football program is going to be back. You know, um, Dana's big time. Um, um, but right now, I like, I like where our basketball program is. I like where it's headed. It doesn't mean we're not going to stub our toe here a few times before Christmas. But uh, I'm anxious to see what we look like in January. You know, we've got we got to go to South Carolina. People forget they finished fourth in the SEC last year. <laughs> um, and they've got a couple of pros, uh, projected pros coming back. Oklahoma State's got everybody back. Um, but, you know, I, I just think I, I, I can – I can see it better than I can say it. Um, I, I think we're going to get a lot better as we go. We're just, we're, we're not scratching the uh, surface yet. We, we've got a long way to go, but I think we have a, um, 
a, a, a team that can get better as we go. We, but so one thing we got to start getting, we got to get some on court leadership. You know, Dejan would help with that, but you know, he's he, he hadn't even practiced with the team for five weeks. Probably shouldn't have been playing against us at uh, BYU. That's why I didn't start him tonight. I said, you know what, Dejan, I shouldn't. Have, that was my fault. I shouldn't even had you out. He mentioned we should have played in that game. But he was out there trying to shoot threes. Um, but, um, you know, he'll get better as a go. Quentin and, Quentin and Dejan, Marcus, Caleb, Nate, uh, that's a solid backcourt. Um, <clears throat> but this was not a night for our, our big guys. They didn't have any big guys for us to guard. Who's Chris Harris going to guard? Um, you know, the one kid, the uh, number, uh, what's that kid's name, Felder? Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's going to be a pretty good player, but, you know, we're better off. I was playing Fabian at the five. Then I said, you know what? That ain't working either. You can't guard Fabian. You can't guard these guys. Let's just go five guards. You know, tonight's one of those balls, you know, just spitball and throw it up and let's see what works. And, you know, we kept throwing enough at the wall, something finally did. Quentin, you guys go on that 13-0 uh, run towards the end of the second half. Did, you guys were trading the lead throughout the second half. Did anything feel different early in that 13-0 run? Uh, I just feel like we just had to come together. We just kind of just settled down. We didn't really kind of let them kind of speed us up as they kind of really, really wanted to. Kind of settled down, just move the ball. It was kind of looking like the best shot, whether that be Marcus coming off a three, Dejan making the right play, or me making three. I feel like we kind of just settled down. We kind of took our time and be patient with the offense. Coach, what would you say was the difference down the stretch offensively? Going to the zone, defense help. But offense. You know what? Not playing with the post, man. I, I, I just said, you know what? Let's play corners, high slots, and middle. And that gave us room to drive. Sometimes you help a defense by sticking somebody at the free throw line. There's an age old adage, well, you got to have somebody at the free throw line. Do you? You know, if you, if you don't have a big man, um, you, you're. And that's why we're getting so many wide open threes. Because once somebody broke the defense down, it, it collapsed and we were just playing inside out. So I think um, uh, playing five guards and, um, and taking those five guards and playing uh, zone with it. Uh, and then when a kid hits the shot, confidence comes. Um, you know, Marcus is such a young freshman. I mean, he's really young. Um, but he's such a great, everybody loves Marcus. He's a great kid. He really is a great kid, great young man. Um, but when he hit a couple shots, then uh, Quentin hit a couple shots, uh, Fabian and uh, Nate, and then Dejan came in and started playing good. I mean, Dejan couldn't have been any worse the first half if it tried to be worse. Um, but the second half he played, he, he, was, he was Dejan again. And that's why I think our team will continue to get better. Because we need Dejan to, if we're going to be what we want to be, Dejan's got to play good. Anything else? No. Quinn, thank you.